Welcome back into the Big Trail Show. Evan Camico alongside in person this week, Kevin McPherson for our Hogs Hoop Report. Kevin, Arkansas loses mm. big time. A 32-point loss here against Auburn. What do you take from this game? Two words, crap show, and you move <laughs> on. I guess that's more than two words. Uh, I mean, Arkansas was in this game late in the first half, up by a point, actually. The last four minutes, you saw Auburn take command and finish the first half the right way. A really good Auburn team, by the way, top 20 defensively and offensively coming into this game, top 15 in both Ned and Kimpom. Uh, but you saw it, a seven-point lead, and then it was all Auburn in the second half. Janai Broom got untracked around the basket, transition. All the hustle, blue-collar plays Arkansas struggled with all year, whether it was getting on the glass, the turnover game. Uh, it was just complete Auburn domination, plus 25 scoring in the second half. 32-point margin is the worst ever at Bud Walton Arena. Mm -hmm. uh, not just an SEC game, but any game for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Absolutely. It was a historic loss at Bud Walton Arena. But one of the things that really stuck out was transition, like you've already talked about, and points in the paint. Arkansas got bullied against Auburn. They scored, I believe, 48-plus yeah. points in the paint, a margin that you talk about all season. they got to be strong down low, especially now in SEC play, and they just were the opposite today. Well, look what Eric Mulsman did. He started a, another different lineup, although he drilled the rotation down in the minutes that mattered. Uh, but he went with three bigs, three six ten players in the in the starting lineup, just to try to get the team off on the right tone and on the glass, using some of that length and maybe have some toughness or physicality, space eating something mattered not. As this game moved on, Auburn proved to be better in er just about every facet of the game. I mean, this is as bad, and they've had some bad stretches under Mulsman before getting things fixed. You know, win five out of six coming into this one. Arkansas said this in all my preview stuff. This is the most athletic, most deep, the deepest, most athletic, lengthwise, all of those things that Arkansas has seen in a while. You really got to go back to the Bahamas, you know, maybe Oklahoma a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and they were going to have to make an adjustment. The Hogs were not able to do that today. Absolutely, and that adjustment we saw. But bright side, Keon Manyfield continues to look good in leading the Hogs offense. And Trevin Brazil had some good sparks today, but it just wasn't enough when you look at the grand scheme of the game. Brazil was one of my key, key pregame keys. Got to have a big game for him. Remember, 19-11-2 back in the win over Duke right here, a top-10 rated team at the time. This was a different matchup, though, when you look at Purdue and Duke. Again, I think a more quality Quality, more quality depth when you look at Auburn and a lot more quickness, athleticism, and then versatility. We talked a lot about Arkansas's versatility of skill sets. That was a team that really had it. Arkansas has not been cohesive all year, even in some of these wins lately. Uh, and we saw that today. We saw one team just putting it all together. Arkansas had no answers once Auburn got on a roll. Good teams are going to make runs at you. You might fall behind two, three, maybe even four possessions and then fight your way back wasn't meant to be today. It just snowballed. And at halftime, down seven, you're thinking, all right, there's a chance. 8-0 runs are inevitable. Right. And Arkansas never went on that 8-0 run against Auburn and just really couldn't fight back. But now you look at ahead. You look at Georgia and Florida coming up. Those are two really tough challenges Absolutely. on the road for Arkansas to get started in the SEC. Arkansas is traditionally known not to just lose one or two out of the <laughs> gates in SEC play, but some really rough patches, five or six games deep. Last year, they started one and five. If, if things play out like they did today, you might see another one of those if you're lucky. <laughs> if you're lucky because you come back and you've got an A&M team that's picked at the top of the conference preseason, has been ranked, there are no easy nights in the SEC. There just aren't. It may not be as great at the top, one, two, or three. It might end up proving to be, but right now when you look at it, you go, wait a minute, but eight or nine deep, there are no nights off. There may be nine NCAA tournament teams in this league, and Arkansas not being counted amongst those after coming in preseason ranked 14th. And you can clearly see there's the Tennessee, Kentucky, and Auburn tier. And then there's kind of everyone else in the SEC. Arkansas scored 106 points last week, only 51 against Auburn. But let's look at recruiting right now. A couple big-name recruits in the house today for an unfortunate game. Yeah, I mean, you had Sam Funtz, a 6'11 forward center, the number one center in the class of 2026, so ranked top, top 10 in the nation, a five-star. Uh, Germantown, Mississippi, he's always keeping tabs with me and telling me he can't wait to come in an Arkansas game. Unfortunately, this is the one he got to today. Uh, but you had several recruits in Isaiah Seeley from in-state, Springdale, Arkansas, class of 2025, the next high school recruiting class the Hogs really will focus on. 6'6", big guard at Springdale, Springdale National Top 50 guy, high-level four-star. There was about eight to ten guys in here today. Those were the two headliners. And, of course, there's more recruiting to talk about because earlier in the week, another five-star in the 2025 class, mm -hmm. a guard, the number one shooting guard in the country, Darren Peterson. Uh, this is a guy that has uh, played out of Huntington Prep, Razorback fans remember that. 
Uh, but that, that's one of those uh, independent schools that plays on the biggest stages in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's a young man that put released his top eight. Arkansas's in that group. Now, I've interviewed and talked to his dad. He said Arkansas will be one of five schools. They're going to take five visits. Arkansas will be one of those probably February or March. So that's not – that's just around the corner. Mm -hmm. But again, Hogs in the final eight. He calls Arkansas Guard University. If you look at what Mossman's done with Moses Moody, Isaiah Joe, Anthony Black, Nick Smith Jr., mm -hmm. other guys getting into the NBA, getting drafted, getting opportunities, he calls it Guard University, and he really likes Arkansas' style of play. If you're Eric Mosman, you hope he wasn't watching today and had something else to do. I hate yeah. to make jokes about it, but we're, we're trying to be positive about some things, but you can't actually turn away from this completely because uh, you had a lot of guys in the house today. And the other thing is the fan support was great. Place was packed. So you get an idea of what it would be like to be an Arkansas Razorback. And it may not, you know, things like this happen, although this was the worst ever for Arkansas. It's first for everything, I guess, Evan. Absolutely. Anything else before we go, Kevin? Not really. I'm still in <laughs> shock. I'm still trying to thaw out. I've got to go through all the numbers. They were all bad and lopsided for Auburn, so there's not a lot to pull out of that positive. We are not going to have a stock risers report like I do after wins. Nope. There's no, not even <laughs> an opportunity to do that today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kevin, we thank you for your time. That's going to do it for your Hawk Hoops report with Kevin McPherson. I'm Evan Camico. More Pig Trail Show coming up after the break.